Hey guys, it's Courtney. I'm here with a 10 card one kit video for the October 2019 Love From Lizzie kit and we are jumping right into card number one. I have two little strips of white card stock here and I'm taking this vine type stamp and I'm using Cotton Candy Ink by Hero Arts. It was the closest match that I had to the pattern paper and I'm just going to go ahead and take my acrylic block there because it was easier than using my stamp positioner and stamp that directly onto those little strips. Now I also have a piece of the polka dot pattern paper here and this is cut down to five and a quarter by four, which is just a little bit smaller than an A2 size card. I'm gonna go ahead and layer that onto my card base, which is an A2 size. And then I'm gonna go ahead and line up these little strips. Now I'm using my grid mat or my work surface here to make sure that they are pretty much lined up the best I can. And also using the little polka dots on the pattern paper to make sure that they are lined up. Next, I'm taking a couple of the peel-offs here, and this is the first time I'm using these. I've seen people use them on YouTube and on their blogs, and I have to say, I love them. It adds just enough to any kind of sentiment or any kind of little embellishment just to make something pop out a little bit. So I'm going to line these on the top and bottom of each one of these strips. I probably should have done this before I adhered my card panel to my card base. It would have been a little bit easier to snip off the edges, but I really didn't have too much of a problem as long as I was just using the tip of my scissors. So once that was done, we're gonna move on to the sentiment and I'm going to take another piece of white cardstock here that's cut just a little bit thicker than these other two strips. And I'm going to be using the same ink, the pink Hero Arts ink, and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my sentiment, centering that the best I can. I probably should have cut it just a little bit wider because a little bit of my lettering or a little bit of my words were cut off, but in the end, you can't really tell too much. Going to go ahead and take my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere this to the center of my two little strips here, and then once again, adding two more of those peel-offs on the top and bottom of this sentiment strip. And that is it for card number one. Moving on to card number two, I'm gonna be using two of the pattern papers here. This is kind of like the mint color and the yellowish color. Going to cut those down with a stitched rectangle die by Simon Says Stamp. I'm using the largest and the second largest die in the set. And I'm using some of the ephemera from the kit which is very unlike me to not do any stamping, coloring, anything like that, but I really love the way this turned out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my white A2 size note card there, taking my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere my largest panel down flat, and then I will adhere this second largest panel directly onto that, kind of centering it again, using these little polka dots as my guide to make sure that everything is straight. Next, I am going to adhere this little sentiment banner with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue as well. I want this to be completely flat down. I'm going to pop up the flowers as well as this little house here. Going to layer the back backs of these with my foam tape, and I use the Exfasten foam tape. It's a lot cheaper than the Scotch foam tape, and actually, I find to be a little bit stickier and a little bit more permanent. So I went ahead and removed the backing to my foam tape and I adhered my flowers down first just so that I could have those down before I actually placed that little house down to make sure that my placement was going to be okay. Going to pop the little flowers on either corner of this little sentiment banner and then pop up my little house underneath it. Now to add a little bit of interest, because like I said, using just ephemera on a card is not very like me. <laughs> so I ended up taking some glossy accents just to add a little bit of interest and I'm putting this over the little windows of the house. Now this will appear to be cloudy and will take a little bit of time to dry, but once it is completely dry, it will be absolutely clear. It won't be have that cloudy look anymore. So that is card number two. Moving on to the third card, we're gonna be doing a little stamping and coloring here. I'm taking from the stamp set this row of houses. 
and I'm taking a piece of white cardstock. I, I'm using my Misty here because this is a fairly large image and I wanna make sure that I get a great impression and I've never stamped with it before. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this out with Blackout Ink by Ink on 3. This is a Copic Safe Ink. And like I said, I did stamp this twice. A lot of times the first time you're stamping a stamp, whether it's a big stamp or a little stamp, you may not get the best impression just because it hasn't been conditioned yet. So moving on to the Copic coloring, I am leaving all of the coloring in this just so that you guys can kind of see how I colored it and how I shaded it. I'm pretty much using a variety of browns, so e-markers, and I did bring in some warm grays and cool grays as well. I'm not worried about a light source, so I'm pretty much just keeping a center light source here, and I am going directly in with my darkest color. These are pretty teeny tiny areas, even though the image itself is large, each individual area that I'm coloring is fairly small. The roofs on the houses are larger, but they have the shingles on them. So you're really not gonna tell if you get a perfect blend or not because you have that detail within the image. But I am just adding a little bit of shading to either side, concentrating a little bit more on the bottom of each of the roofs. And for the houses themselves, I'm adding a little bit of shading to either side as well as where the roof is kind of hanging over the house. Going around the windows, realizing that I'm probably not going to be all that careful <laughs> and I will have to fix up some of my coloring errors or my coloring mistakes later on. So for this one here, I am going to have to go around these windows, but again, starting off with that darkest color, just adding a little bit of shading to either side, just extending that shadow or extending that shading a little bit more on the bottom portion of the roof, blending that out with the two midtones and just leaving the center portion for that highlight color, which in this case is the E53. Now for this house, I'm gonna switch over to the warm grays. And again, going directly in with that darkest color, adding some shading underneath where the roof is hanging over the house as well as either side. And then I'll just blend that out each time. Now I did pick color combinations that do blend very well together. So pretty much natural blending families. So going in with the darkest color is not going to be all that big of a deal. If you've ever watched my videos before, you'd know that I normally start off with the lightest color Color to saturate the paper. The more the, satu the more saturated the paper is, the better blend you're going to get. But you being I'm using some natural blending families, I'm really not having too much of an issue here. So for the little frames of the windows, I'm going in with the very tip of my marker to fill these in. You want to make sure that your marker is straight up and down and you are barely touching the paper with the tip of your marker in order to get into these teeny tiny areas. For the little teeny tiny areas, I don't bother to do any shading because you're going to risk it bleeding or going out of the lines. And sometimes that's a little bit hard to fix when you're using a darker color than the surrounding areas. So moving on to this third and final house here, going to start off with that roof. Again, just adding some shading on either side. And for the door, I'm just adding some shading from the bottom up. Now for this house, I want this to appear white. So I'm gonna be using some cool grays here. And again, starting off with that darkest color, just adding those shadows where the roof is hanging over the house and also where that one section of the house would be kind of sticking out a little bit. And then I'm gonna flick that color out in those larger areas with the C3. And then when I move on to the C1, I'm pretty much flicking out to nothing, I guess you could say. So because I want this house to appear white, I am leaving some white space. So I'm kind of just flicking out to white. So I'm going to just finish off the coloring with this door for the middle house here that I totally forgot. And then I'm just going to take one of my yellow markers. I took the Y23 just because I don't want it to be overly bright. And I'm just going to color the inside of each of the windows to appear as if the light is on in each one of these houses. Once all of my coloring was done, I am going to go ahead and fussy cut out this image and I am just leaving a small white border around everything. Now you want to make sure that you're, when you're doing the fussy cutting, you're keeping your paper 
no larger than it needs to be. So I'm gonna cut off all of this excess and then go ahead and fussy cut the image. It just makes it a lot easier. These are pretty straight lines, so it wasn't too difficult to cut this out. Once all my cutting was done, I go out and fix any areas that I may have maybe had too much of a border or maybe not enough. And here's where I can go ahead and fix my coloring mistakes. And I just typically take a white gel pen to fix any of those areas that I may have gone out of the lines or my colors bled a little bit. So next, moving on to the assembly of the card here, I have a piece of the black cardstock as well as the gray. Going to layer the gray cardstock on the black cardstock and then layer that onto a white A2 size note card. So I have a little bit of a white border as well as a little bit of a black border. Going to kind of line up my houses where I want them to be so that I know where I need to stamp my sentiment. And the sentiment is also from that stamp set. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that with black dye ink by Simon Says Stamp, which is one of my favorite inks to use for sentiments. And once I was happy with that, I'm layering the entire back of the image that we fussy cut with that foam tape and popping that up directly underneath my sentiment. Now, this was looking pretty bare, <laughs> which I don't mind. I like clean and simple cards, but it was a little bit too much. I can't really say white space, but I guess you could say gray space. So I did finish off the card just by adding a few of the sequins from the sequin mix from the kit. And I just used my glossy accents to stick those down and then added a little bit of glossy accents to the center just to make sure that they don't move around in the mail. And again, this will look a little bit cloudy in the beginning, but once it's dry, it will be completely clear. So that is it for that one. Moving on to the next card, we are going to be using some of the cutouts or the cut aparts, I think they're called. And I'm gonna be using one of the larger ones here. And I love this sentiment and I love this image. Went ahead and cut that directly on those lines and I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle. So I'm taking a quickie glue pen, which is basically just a pen that flows out with glue instead of ink. <laughs> and I am just going directly over that word together. Just going directly over the white lines and then i'm using some of the glitter that comes in the kit and i'm just going to sprinkle that on letting any of the excess fall onto this scrap piece of paper that way all i have to do is kind of fold up the paper and put any remaining glitter right back in the bag now you will want to let this dry for just a little bit because that glue underneath the glitter is still wet so if you handle it right now all the glue is just going to come out in a big old chunk so I went ahead and put that aside, and next we're gonna move on to the card panel itself. I didn't want just a plain white card panel, so I'm using my scoreboard, which is super old. I think I've had this thing for about five years. And I'm just using my scoring tool here, and I'm just gonna create a pattern in the background. So I'm adding a line every half an inch, and then I'm adding a line right next to that every eighth of an inch. I think it's an eighth of an inch. Just to add a little bit of a pattern to the background so it's not so plain. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this down and you could adhere this down embossed side up or debossed side up, whatever you choose. Going to adhere that down with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to the navy card base here and then I will pop up my sentiment or my focal point here now that my glitter is dry. I'm gonna use that same x -Fasten foam tape layering the entire back and then just centering that right over that white card panel. And that is it for that one. Moving on to the next card, we are going to be doing a little bit more Copic coloring. And this time we're doing some paper piecing. So I'm gonna stamp this chair directly on my card panel as well as on a piece of this pattern paper. I'm using the green pattern paper for this one. And I'm also going to stamp the lamp but directly on the card panel itself, not on the pattern paper. Now you can leave it just like this and fussy cut it out, but I did wanna add a little bit of shading to add some dimension to this chair. So I'm gonna bring out my cool gray markers and I'm just using three colors here and I'm just gonna add my shading to the very darkest areas, which is pretty much gonna be where one part of the chair is laying over another. So whatever's behind it would have a shadow cast on it. 
also adding a little bit of shading to either side, just keeping a center light source and blending that out with the C3 and then finishing off with the C1, again, flicking that color out to nothing. So I'm leaving some space that has no coloring at all so that I could see the pattern from the pattern paper a little bit easier. I did bring out an E29 marker just to color in the I think they're legs, I think they're called legs of the chair, <laughs> but I'm not doing any shading here. I just wanted a dark enough color to cover up that pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and fussy cut this out directly along that black line. And then I'm going to add a little bit of, a little table here that the lamp would be sitting on. So I'm just bringing out my T-square ruler as well as a Copic Safe pen, which is, this is an EK Success journaling pen. I'm keeping it real simple here, just straight lines <laughs> for the table as well as the table legs. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit of shading there with those E20 markers. Again, again, this is a teeny tiny area and I'm not really focusing on the coloring for this card. So I'm going directly in with my darkest color, adding a little bit of shading to the back portion or the part of the table that's furthest back from us. Also where the chair is hanging over the table a little bit would cast a shadow. And also the bottom part of the lamp that's sitting on the table would also have a little bit of a shadow there. So blending that out with the E25, E23, and then I'm finishing off with that E21 for that highlight area just right there in the front. For the lamp, I guess for the lamp part itself, I'm going to color this in with the same cool grays that I used for the chair, just so it kind of looks like metal, I guess you could say. For the lamp shade, I wanted this to closely match the chair. So I'm bringing in some green markers and I'm going directly in with the darkest color because there's not a whole lot of area to work with. Now each line within the lamp shade here, I'm using as my guide where to put my shading because this would be the part that would kind of be indented in. So I'm going in with my G28, basically just tracing these lines out. Then I'll take my G24 and just extend those lines out a little bit further, then finish off with the G21 and just fill in any of those highlight areas, being careful not to overblend or else you're going to lose that G28 that we've already put down. So next, once that was done, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my my cut out chair, I guess you could say, down with that Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I definitely recommend using a wet glue for this. Oh, first, sorry. First, I outlined the side of it with a waterproof or water-based pen. You don't want to use a Copic marker for this because it's going to bleed. It's going to blend with the colors that we already have on there. So I do recommend using a wet glue for this. That way it'll give you a couple of seconds to kind of move things around to make sure it is lined up perfectly, where if you use a double-sided adhesive, you don't necessarily have that. So I wanted to add a little bit of a shadow so they're not just kind of floating here. So I have those cool gray markers still sitting on my desk. So I'm going to go ahead and use those, starting off with the C5, and all I'm really doing is just drawing a line <laughs> underneath all of my objects here, then blending that out from either side as well as kind of moving it down a little bit with the C3 as well as the C1. And then I will finish off with the sentiment from the stamp set. Again, stamping this with that black dye ink by Simon Says Stamp. And then of course I added a little bit of sparkle to the lampshade only with a Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen. Adhere this to a white A2 size note card, and that is it for this one. And for this one, we're going to be using more of the cut aparts as well as some of the ephemera in the kit. I have a piece of the yellow polka dot pattern paper as well as this cutout here that is says home. But I'm going to cut this down just a little bit so that I have a little bit more space on the bottom of my card panel. Now I'm using the ephemera that also says home and I'm basically just going to be adhering this directly over those other letters to kind of create a shadow look. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this down to a white piece of cardstock that is just slightly larger than my pattern paper but a little bit smaller than an A2 size card. Also adhering the cut apart here right to the top portion of my card panel. 
I wanted to add a little bit of the twine that comes in the kit on the bottom, which is why I cut this down a little bit. And I'm gonna tie this around twice and then tie in a bow. Now, when I tie bows, which I'm not the best bow tire, but I like to tie it upside down. So I'm gonna flip my card panel around and that way, for some reason, I get better results that way because I feel like I have a little bit more control as, as far as where I can kind of manipulate <laughs> everything and make everything fall the way I need it to or the way I want it to. So once I do have that bow tied, I did snip off any excess twine that's kind of hanging off there. And I also took a glue dot and put it directly underneath the bow. That way it'll stay in place in the mail or while I'm storing the card because I have a hard time giving out cards and they kind of just pile up in my craft room. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to my card base. I'm going to layer the entire back with the foam tape with the exception of where the twine is. This part is already kind of sticking out, so I don't want to add any more dimension, but I did add a little bit of that wet glue there just to make sure it doesn't move around. Adhere this to my card base, and then I'm going to take little teeny tiny strips of that same foam tape and adhere this to the back of all of these letters, the ephemera letters, and pop these up directly over the letters from the cut apart. Now the letters from the ephemera set are a little bit smaller, but I kind of like the look it gives because it gives a little bit of a kind of like a shadow look, even though they're actually different colors, or at least some of them are different colors. So this took a little bit of time, but I popped up all of my letters. And again, with the glossy accents, I'm obsessed with the glossy accents lately. I added a little bit of shimmer first with my Nouveau Aqua Shimmer Pen, and then took my glossy accents and went over each one of the letters that are popped up. And this will, again, look a little bit cloudy, but it gives an awesome shine and a little even more dimension to everything once it is dry. So that is it for that one. Moving on to the next card, we're gonna be using some of the dies in the kit. I also have a piece of white cardstock here and I used the diagonal stitched rectangle die and I think this is the third largest from the set and that's by MFT. I have my little rain boot or my garden boot cut out as well as this flower. I'm going to use my Copic markers just to add a little bit of color to my die cuts. You can do ink blending here. You can go in solid with a marker or anything you want. You don't necessarily have to do any shading, but I am a colorist and I, I can't leave well enough alone. So I, I I ended up adding a little bit of shading to each side of the boot, being this would be more of a rounder object, especially on the ankle area of the boot. So I kept my highlight in the center. For the flower, I didn't do much shading except for the leaves. So I'm going directly in with my darkest color, coloring in the stem as well as the center or the base portion of each of the leaves, blending that out with that G24, and then just leaving the highlight on the tip of each one of those leaves for the G21. And you'll see that I'm using the same colors over and over because this is what I have on my desk at this point. Now for the flower, I'm gonna bring in an RV marker, and being these are such teeny tiny areas, I'm not gonna do any shading here. I'm just gonna go in straight with this RV 17, and I'm just leaving the center of the flower uncolored because I am gonna bring back out one of my Y markers just for the center of the flower, which I should have colored first because I took the chance of kind of dragging that RV 17 out, which tends to happen with the RVs and the R markers and even the V markers a lot. So you just want to be super careful when you're going around those darker areas that you don't drag that color out in places that you don't want them to. So next I'm taking a piece of the gray cardstock and I'm just kind of seeing how this looks before I adhere everything down. Gluing down my little window panel here straight down to that gray cardstock and then I am going to adhere this down to a gray card base which honestly I probably could have skipped the layer of the gray cardstock behind it being the card base is gray anyway but I didn't 
So I'm just gonna leave a small gray border around each one of the edges, and then I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my die cuts down. I adhered the flower first because I want the flower to kind of be sticking out of the boot, and then gluing the boot directly over that. Again, using the wet glue so I have a couple of seconds to kind of move things around and make sure they are the way I want them before they become permanent. Next, I went ahead and die cut my sentiment from that gray card stock, same gray as I used for the card base. And instead of using the glue, because there's such teeny tiny areas here, using my little sticker maker, which I don't use as often as I probably should, it does make gluing down small intricate dies a lot easier. And I'm just gonna pop that up, or not pop that up, lay that flat, directly underneath my little window here, and then finished off the card with some of the clear heart gems that are part of the set. I just added a few on either side of that sentiment. So that finishes off that card. Moving on to the next card, I'm going to be creating a shaker card for this one. So I'm going to be using one of these cut aparts here as well as some stitched rectangle dies by Simon Says Stamp. I use the largest and the third largest to create my little shaker frame there went ahead and cut down this cut apart using the one that already basically has a sentiment in there so I don't have to worry about trying to fit a sentiment into the card and kind of just let the shaker card or shaker part of it be the star of the show, I guess you could say. So I'm going to go ahead and start assembling everything here. So I'm taking a piece of acetate and I'm using my Tombow Mono Multi-Glue, I definitely suggest using a very strong adhesive to adhere your acetate to your shaker frame. Now the acetate that I have is actually the same size as my card panel, so I did cut this down a little bit because I don't want to take the chance of this hanging off the sides. Not that you can't trim it off, but it just makes it a little bit easier to have it the right size to begin with. So I am using my Tombow Mono Multi-Glue. I pretty much use this adhesive for almost everything to adhere my shaker window right to the back of my frame there. Next, I'm gonna line this up on my black card, card base here because I wanna make sure that my sentiment or my cut apart is centered perfectly. So once I do have that centered, I'm going to remove that shaker frame that we don't have yet put together, but I'm trying to keep the sentiment or that cut apart right in place. Just going to lift up one of the corners and add a little bit of, adhes of adhesive there so that it doesn't shift around and it's still exactly where I need it to be. Just added a little bit more adhesive to all four corners so this doesn't shift around. The Tombow Mono Multi Glue does dry fairly quickly and becomes permanent within just a couple of seconds. So next I'm going to add my foam tape to the back of my shaker now that the glue is dry from the adhesive. Now when you're adding your foam tape, you wanna make sure that you're going as close to the shaker window as you can and making sure that each corner meets or else your little shaker bits are gonna fall between those little cracks. Now for this one, because I needed this to be lined up with that cut apart perfectly, I'm going to add my shaker pieces or the sequins right to the card base itself. So right over my little cut apart here. And normally I would add them to the inside of the shaker window, but I don't trust myself to line this up perfectly. So I'm going to remove the backing of my foam tape and as carefully as I possibly can line this up directly over or onto my card base, making sure that it's lined up the best I can. And that is it. No sentiment or anything is needed for this. It's right part of the shaker frame. For the next card, we're going to be doing just a little bit more Copic coloring, but again, keeping it pretty simple. Going to stamp out this old fashioned telephone onto my white card panel with that blackout ink by Ink on 3 because it is a Copic safe ink. Stamping this a little bit off to the right hand side because I'm going to be adding a border to the left hand side. So I'm gonna bring out that same yellow combination that I have been using because it's there and it actually does match the border pretty well. This time I am starting off with my lightest color. I typically do, especially when there's a lot of areas that may have a lot of shading. This way I can kind of 
guide myself as to where I want to put my shadows. And if I make a mistake, I can easily cover the lightest color, where if I go right in with the darkest color, I may not be able to take that away if I accidentally place a shadow or add shading to an area that I don't necessarily want it to be in. So then I'll go in with my darkest color once I'm happy with those areas for my shading and shadows, blend that out with the mid-tone, and then I'll finish back off with that lightest color that we started with. For this, again, I'm just keeping a center light source, so I'm adding some shading on either side. Also, a lot of these areas would be round objects. So anytime you're coloring anything round, your highlight is going to be in the center anyways, and this is what's gonna kind of give you that shape that you're looking for. So I pretty much colored the entire telephone with the same color combination, but for the, I think it's called a rotary phone, the num where the numbers are, I kept that white. I did have a lot of coloring errors here because some of the areas are so teeny tiny. So I did have to bring in my colorless blender just to kind of remove some of those areas. These are fairly light colors, so you don't necessarily have too much of a problem removing them with the colorless blender. If it happens to be a darker color, you're probably better off using a white gel pen to fix any of those coloring mistakes that you may have made. So next I'm going to go ahead and add one of the stickers from the kit and this is the border here. So I'm just again using my work surface with the grid lines to make sure that this is lined up and then I'll just take my scissors and snip off any excess that's kind of hanging over that card panel. I'm going to go ahead and use my chipped sapphire distress oxide ink because I feel like that's pretty close to the color of that border and stamping my sentiment directly underneath my little telephone. And again, finishing off the card with a few of these clear heart gems that are part of the kit and just adding a few of those to either side of the sentiment. Moving on to the final card, I'm going to use some of these cutouts, the smaller ones this time. And I originally had three of them cut out, but ended up not being able to fit all three. I also have black card stock that is all cut just a teeny tiny bit larger than those squares. So I think they're two inches. These are like two and an eighth or something like that. Very, very teeny tiny bit larger. So this is where I realized I couldn't fit everything. So I ended up settling for using just two of them. So I have a piece of this mint color cardstock, and this is the pattern paper. I'm just using the solid side of it. Matted that onto a piece of black cardstock, just a little bit larger than that panel and just a little bit smaller than my white A2 size note card. Also layering these little houses onto that black cardstock as well, just so that I have a little bit of a border for those. It just makes your images pop a little bit by just adding a small black border. I pretty much do it for everything. <laughs> so next for my sentiment strip, I have another piece of this black cardstock that is cut to the same length as my card panel. Going to go ahead and treat that with my anti-static tool and then stamp my sentiment with Versamark Clear Sticky Ink. My Versamark pad is very, very dirty, but it works. Sprinkling on some white embossing powder and then I will use my heat gun to heat set that. You'll just wanna make sure that your heat gun is heated up a few seconds before bringing that to the paper and that will minimize the amount of warping that you get. So again, going to go ahead and adhere everything flat with my Tombow Mono Multi Glue, starting off with that sentiment strip, then adding adhesive to both of these little houses. That way I can have a few seconds to kind of move them around. I am kind of using my grid mat as a guide, but this way, in case I have to move everything, anything, which I did, I, the wet glue allows me that time to do so. So I'm next going to finish off this card with a few more of those peel offs and I'm going to add these to the top and the bottom of my sentiment strip. Again, I had already adhered this to a card base, which I probably should have waited, but it had no problem snipping off the remaining or the excess on either side. So that finishes off the 10th and final card for this card kit. Here is a quick look at all 10 of the cards that we created with the kit. I will leave links to all products that I used in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today and have a great day. Bye.